We're talking all things specifically spring football in Oxford as the 2024 season quickly approaches. Zach, what's going on, my friend? Appreciate you taking the time. Chris, good morning, man. Appreciate you having me back. Yeah, man. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know things in Oxford. It's very exciting times to be a fan of the Ole Miss Rebels. That being said, Zach, we'll go ahead and dive right into it. Um, what's this spring been like for Ole Miss? You know, obviously it's always exciting when you see the boys get back on the field and, and get back after it. But when you have a season like Ole Miss had, winning 11 games first time in school history, right? Winning that Peach Bowl over Penn State. And then, of course, you talk about recruiting and specifically transfer portal successes. There's a lot of excitement around the Ole Miss football program right now, and with that brings high expectations. What, what's been that level of excitement, if you will, during spring practice? Yeah, the the bridge from the Peach Bowl to now, um, it's kind of a different, a whole different vibe and mindset for Ole Miss fans. Um, the expectations are pretty high, and, and I don't think it's there, – there's, you know, there's a certain segment of – Every fan base that oh 10 wins, 11 wins, everybody's you know fanatical. That, that's you know, that's where the, the term fan comes from. But I think it's it's valid this year. Um it was a weird uh in a good way, a weird vibe at the Peach Bowl where most Ole Miss fans, you know, were pretty quietly confident in that game. Um I I was there, I saw it in my own two eyes, Chris. They dominated Penn State. Um, it was a pretty emphatic beatdown. Um, Lane Kiffin and that offense kind of had their way with Penn State. And now they were down some guys that sat out, you know, looking ahead to the NFL draft. And then, you know, after that first, I don't know, six, seven, eight minutes of the game, Pete Golding and the defense settled in. Um, and, and I think that has carried over into this offseason where it's just a very confident and motivated football team and program that is expecting to do big things. Um, yeah, the, the hype is very real. We, we did a show earlier this week uh, on our podcast, Talk of Champions. Check it out. We, we talked about like, hey, the expectations, I wouldn't say college football playoff or bust, but I mean, it's, I feel like the floor is nine and three, 10 and two at the very least. Hmm. Um, yeah, Kiffin is very, very focused, but um, I, I think there's a very calculated and, um, intentional way that he is talking about this team. He makes sure to remind everyone, you know, the rat poison, you know, hey, this this is a good roster, but we're not sure if it's a good team yet. I think a lot of that is coach speak. I think he knows this is, this is a team that could potentially be the real deal. And Zach, a lot of reason for that hype that you mentioned is the successes in the transfer portal, adding the slew of fantastic talent on the defensive side specifically. Uh, but as Lane Kiffin mentioned, and to your point, great roster. We don't know if it's a great team yet. How do you feel like those transfer portal pieces have meshed? Because I think that obviously is the big question for Ole Miss is you bring in a bunch of new guys. How are they going to fit into the culture? How are they going to acclimate from what you've heard, what you've seen? How do you feel that process is going? Because, again, that is a very, very real thing, getting guys adjusted and acclimated to the culture of the program. Yeah, that's a big word. Um, pro mindset is kind of the mantra. Uh, we have a show with uh, Jared Ivey, the defensive end. He uh, does a show once a week. He'll have players. Um, they've had Walker Jones, who runs the collective. Um, this week they're going to have the AD, Keith Carter, on as well. Um, he talks about it a lot where once Jackson Dart kind of got the ball rolling with, Hey, I'm back. Um, a lot of them were like, you know, they coined it, you know, the last dance, um, you know, a la the, you know, Netflix documentary with Michael Jordan and the bulls. But yeah, it's just like, Hey, if darts back, then, you know, why, why should, why should I leave? Let's all come back. Let's all try to, you know, run it back one more time and, and get to the playoff and, and try to win the sec and try to win a national championship. So the, Pro mindset portion of the message that Kiffin has and the staff is really delivered. And, and you know, the, the, the experienced guys, three-year, four-year guys coming back, that's the catalyst for it, where you're bringing in these new faces and making sure everybody's on the same page, everybody's buying in. Um, you know, whether you're Walter Nolan, you know, the former number one overall prospect, 
or, you know, you're a guy like Brandon Turnage who's been around the block and, and knows his way around the SEC, um, you know, a princely Umam Yellen. You're expected to come in and, and we, you know, as a staff, you know, if, if, if I'm talking like I'm Lane Kiffin, hey, we expect you to be a dude day one. Um, you know, they go and get two offensive linemen, two starters from the Washington offensive line, won the Joe Moore Award, um, you know, had a fantastic year, runner-up finish. Um, you know, those are the, the, the kinds of players that the – the echelon is now higher where it's not just, Hey, we're, we're going to get a couple guys and then we're going to piecemeal it with some, you know, experienced dudes here and there. They're still doing that, but they're getting big time name cachet and, and you know, the Walter Nolan's, the you mm-hmm. mommy Ellen's, um, you know, Diego pounds, number one left tackle in the portal. Uh, you, you swipe a guy like Amorian Walker, who before the injury, before he left Michigan, Harbaugh, was telling people like, Hey, this guy's going to challenge for, you know, cornerback one spot. Um, So you've got a good mix of really, really good talent. And then you've got the experienced been around the block type guys like Chris Paul, Jr. Poo Paul from Arkansas, um, just a plug and play guy. Trey Amos is one that he gets, I don't think he gets talked about enough. I mean, that's a rubber stamp, Nick Saban corner. What more do you need? If Nick Saban thinks you can play cornerback on an island, press man, mono, e mono, like that's that's what you want. Um, and then, you know, Yam Banks from South Alabama came back to Mississippi, you know, thought about the NFL draft, thinks he needs to do, you know, hey, I need to I, I need to up my stock a little bit. And then, yeah, Juice Wells, um, South Carolina, still rehabbing, coming back from the injury, trying to make sure that, hey, we're not going to rush him back. We're going to make sure he's 100% because, oh, by the way, Trey Harris is back as well, and you know he, he might be one of the best to do it at the wide receiver position this mm-hmm. season. Uh, let's stick, Zach, with the defensive side of the football because you mentioned all those talented pieces that Ole Miss has added, Walter Nolan, Trey Amos, Paul Jr., Princely, Uman, Mielin, sort of headlining that group. Uh, you know, who do you feel like has emerged as the leader of the defense during spring? Has that guy emerged? Do you see it being more of a leading by committee? Or, uh, you know, I, I know that's one of the key things, right? Pete Golding's defense, you're looking for that that guy who when the tough, you know, things get going tough, because in the SEC, they inevitably do. Who's going to be that leader, whether it's vocal, lead by example? How do you feel like those pieces have come together defensively? Because, I mean, Zach, I, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say this most talented defense in Ole Miss history um, but the pieces yeah. still have to come together uh, by the time this thing kicks off this fall. Yeah, I mean, on paper, I don't think it's hyperbole to say this is the best roster that an Ole Miss team has ever had, probably next to that 2014 team that had a top five defense. Um, so we still need to see what it's going to look like when things kick off in September. But it's a good problem to have, Chris, where you've got dudes fighting over who's going to be the bell cow, who's going to be the leader. Um, I think the obvious answer since committing, you know, leaving Arkansas, committing to Ole Miss damn near immediately on his visit, it's Pooh Paul. He's been vocal on Twitter. He's been vocal uh, in practice. And then um, Walter Nolan, Prince Liam, Mommy Ellen, Trey Amos, those guys are really sticking out in practice. Uh, I was talking to uh, a guy that was at practice this week and – he was talking about the offensive line and he said, this is the biggest offensive line I've ever seen at Ole Miss. Um, Everybody looks like Laramie Tunsil. Everybody's huge. And Walter Nolan is still blowing stuff up in practice. So that's going to be, you know, that, that good on good that, that you love to see. That was why I thought Alabama for so long recruited so well. Yeah. You had Nick Saban, you won trophies, you won, you know, all that. Players want to go and compete against other elite players. You know, elite guys want that. Um, at least at least the ones you, you want to have on your team, right? You don't want to shy away from competition. You don't want to be scared of, hey, I think I'm a five-star. I should start. But, oh, they got another five-star. I don't know if I want to go there. No, you don't want that. Like, And I think that that's really been uh, harnessed in practice. I know Ole Miss has done a bunch of promo videos of, Trey Harris versus Trey Amos in practice, you know, the iron sharpens iron, all the cliches. I mean, that's going to, that's going to pay dividends down the stretch where you've got 
one of the best receivers in the country going up against one of the best corners in the country. You got Walter Nolan and Prince Umami Owen. They're going to get those new faces on the offensive line ready. They're going to get those returning starters on the offensive line ready for SEC play. You know, Kiffin said that after the Georgia game when Ole Miss was just embarrassed on national TV. Point blank said it in the in the press conference, Chris. He was like, We're, we don't look like a team that can contend right now. We got to get bigger. And they, they certainly did that in the offseason via the portal. Zach, let's move to the offensive side of the football. And one thing that's not a mystery is Jackson Dart is the leader of this football team and certainly this offense. I, I know he's not really an area of concern for Ole Miss fans, but how would you feel his spring has gone? I mean, obviously, you go in a lot of instances as far as your quarterback can take you. And as good as he was last year, I still think there's obviously room for growth and improvement. How, how do you feel like the spring has gone thus far for Jackson Dart, and what are the overall reports of his progression? Uh, a lot of people said that he his body looks better. Um, probably trimmed a you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to say fat, I mean, he's not fat, but you know, you know, toned up a little bit. Uh, Kiffin joked that he's gotten taller. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think there, there there's a mental side of it where he's comfortable. He's not looking over his shoulder. I don't think he ever was. I mean, the the quarterback competition you know, that that's a storyline that's just easy, you know, fodder for, for the off season and spring ball is, you know, Ooh, you know, who's battling at quarterback. No, nah, there's no battle. Like I, everybody knows this is Jackson darts team. Um, but I, I mean, everybody says that he looks as decisive and comfortable and as, as good as he's been since arriving at Ole Miss. I, I think the emergence of Caden priest corn in that peach bowl, where he just carved up Penn State. I think he's finally healthy. He had that nagging foot injury all year. Um, you know, he had some offseason stuff. You know, he, he lost his dad. I, I can't imagine doing that and playing high-level college football. I mean, the, the amount of stress and emotions with that and the injury in a new place, and, and it, like, you know, it, he is going to be, I think, in a – at a different level this year where it's, Hey, this is, this is, this is a bag year for him. Like this is a draft year. You got to go out and ball and, and try to improve that draft stock. And then I think Ole Miss did him a, a, a service by snagging Daquan Wright from Virginia tech, a different style of tight end, but somebody that will complement him well and, and allow him to, you know, I, we're probably going to see them on the field at the same time, try to expose those mismatches, but yeah, I mean, the offense is is going to be electric. We talked about Trey Harris already. Uh, Jordan Watkins is back for a third year. Um, he had the hand injury last year and was, was still tremendous. Um, a very reliable possession guy. And then, yeah, we, we talked about Juice Wells. Once he gets back and is 100%, I mean, I, I think the sky's the limit for this, this offense. I think they could – very easily be top 10, top five in terms of balance and explosive plays. You know, Kiffin likes to run the football. He likes to establish the run and be physical, but you know he's going to take his shots uh, and, and try to get after people and stretch the field. So, um, yeah, Dart being so much more comfortable and he, I mean, he knows the offense up, down, left, right, backwards, forwards. It's, I think, it truly is a best case scenario for Ole Miss when you look at the schedule and with the playoff field being expanded. Zach, this is somewhat of a side note, more so on the note of the 2024 season than spring ball, but Lane Kiffin a couple of weeks ago talking about the the new helmet communication for the first 25 seconds of the play clock, calling it a cheat code. And we actually did a segment on that. Um, your thoughts on his comments via that? How has that gone in spring practice, and how much do you think that helps what Lane Kiffin and the Ole Miss Rebels are trying to do offensively? Yeah, I mean, it was funny because when that was first proposed, Kiffin kind of pushed back a little. Um, and, you know, I was talking to people back, and I was like, why is he pushing back? Like, I feel like he would love that. Um, maybe Kiffin just likes – the whole, you know, part of because if you're at a game, if you're if you're on the sidelines or you're close to the field, you can hear Kiffin whistle. You know, I don't know if he does it one or two. He whistles and he'll he'll audible like he does a lot of that. Um, you know, maybe he just likes, 
you know, flexing that whistle muscle a little bit, but now he doesn't have to. I mean, I think it's going to be a game changer. Um, I mean, just being able to audible on the fly, especially on the road, right? I mean, mm -hmm. at home, sure. I mean, Ole Miss, it, it can get loud, but it's not the loudest place. It's not the biggest stadium. Um, and still, <laughs> it's 2024. Some people don't realize, like, hey, if if our team is on offense, we should be quiet. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, when they go on the road, I, I think it's going to be crucial. Third downs, fourth downs, um, in the red zone, you know, when you're – you know, you got to stay in your in that coach's box. You can't get all the way down there. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Kiffin can stay back. He can see the whole field, and he can just get on the radio and do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, especially for him, someone that you know is a lot of chess, not checkers, and three or four plays ahead, setting things up. We've seen that throughout his tenure, throughout his, his coaching tenure, not just at Ole Miss. He will run things in the first half to set things up for the second half. He will put stuff on film for two weeks down the road when he's, you know, going to play Kirby Smart in Georgia. He's doing that intentionally to put stuff on tape so people have to defend it. Now with with the in-helmet communication, I, I don't think there's a, any negative to it, especially with a mind like Lane Kiffin. Now, Zach, one of the few questions I feel like, because it feels like Ole Miss is so established across the board, would like you mentioned, one of the most talented rosters in the SEC – uh, the running back position, life after Quinshawn Judkins has begun this spring. Uh, Ulysses Bentley is back. He was fantastic. You pick up Logan Diggs from the transfer portal coming over from LSU. And Kedrick Riscano, a talented youngster, returns as well, amongst a group of others. What has life been like after Quinshawn Judkins? I'm sure there's multiple layers to this because I, I think a lot of Ole Miss folks, at least I see, would argue that the locker room is, is better off without him. But But either way, from what you've seen in spring ball at that position, you did mention Lane Kiffin. He loves to run the football. That's somewhat of a misconception. They think about his offense, high-flying, throwing it down the field. But it starts with the running game for Ole Miss. Uh, do you feel like – are you concerned at all that there may be a drop-off in production? Has Ulysses Bentley and the rest of that group eased some of those concerns? Overall thoughts on how the running back room has looked this spring? Yeah, I mean, there's no denying Ole Miss will miss Quinshawn Judkins. He was one of the better running backs in the country. He's I mean, I would probably argue him and Ollie Gordon were two of the best uh, last season. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there was there was some some locker room stuff. Uh, <laughs> and, and but but it, with if you put that aside, there's no denying the talent. I mean, if he if Chris if he had stayed, he would have broken every running back record at Ole Miss. There's no arguing that. Um, but Ulysses Bentley, man, I, he he doesn't get his flowers enough. He was electric last year. I mean, he had the big run against LSU. He's really good out of the backfield. Um, he's really worked on his pass pro. That's a big thing with Kiffin and, and running backs coach Kevin Smith. If you can't if you can't protect the quarterback, you're not playing. Um, but they do like speaking of Kevin Smith. He loves the by committee style. He loves to keep the tread on the tires. They ran Judkins a lot. He was a bell cow, you know, RB1 type. But they still like to keep people fresh and to rotate. Um, I still expect Henry Parrish to uh, end up at Ole Miss. He entered the portal a couple weeks ago. He's tight with Kevin Smith. I, I, I mean, literally and figuratively. When, when he was coming out of high school, he signed with Ole Miss because of his relationship with Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith goes to Miami. Henry Parrish goes to Miami. Kevin Smith goes back to Ole Miss. Henry Parrish finish out, finishes out his, his 23 season. He gets in the portal. It's expected that that he will return to Ole Miss for his final year. Um, and he's a good, balanced guy. I mean, he, he ran the ball a lot for Miami. He's good out of the backfield. He's pretty good in pass pro. That's just another weapon. And I think that would be big for Logan Diggs to where they're not rushing him back. The expectation is for Diggs to be ready by SEC play. Uh, coming off the ACL injury, but it would be nice for Ole Miss to add at least one or two more backs in the spring portal window to where, hey, like you can tell Diggs, like, hey, you don't have to rush. We're good. Because um, I, I think in a perfect world, Chris, they would they would add two running backs in the portal, and then Diggs can just take it easy and be ready for 2025. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think that Judkins will be missed. There's no denying that. But they have talent in that room. You mentioned Riscano. I'm interested to see 
how many carries he gets early in the year in those non-conference games. I want to see him in the spring game. I want to see what he looks like with this newly revamped and reloaded offensive line with some big dudes. Um, Cause he's, he's the kind of running back that Kiffin likes where he's a little bit of both. He can get outside. He can stretch the field. He can outrun those linebackers, but he's not shy to run between the tackles. So um, yeah, I would keep, if you're, if you're an Ole Miss fan, keep an eye out on the portal. I think Parrish, will end up at Ole Miss, but there's probably one more out there that Ole Miss is going to try to land. So, Zach, we know about the household names, whether it be via the transfer portal or the returners. Has there been a guy or a couple guys that have turned heads that you think are making headway this spring that fans may be unfamiliar with at this point? Uh, probably uh, if you're, a, I guess, a casual or maybe not a hardcore dive into the depth chart fan, um, you got a glimpse of him in the Peach Bowl. I think Caden Lee is going to be a guy to to know this year. Um, true freshman last year, he played a little bit non-conference, um, had a big touchdown catch uh, late in the year against a non-conference opponent, but he played a lot in the Peach Bowl with Watkins with the hand injury. And um, I guess at that point, they kind of knew he was going to come back, so they didn't want to try to you know push him in that bowl game to injure it further. But um, he's a possession guy. Um not as explosive or have, you know, that elite wiggle that Elijah Moore had in the slot, but he's a crafty route runner um, for his age. I think that young, um, he's really worked on honing that part of his craft and he runs good routes. And I think new wide receivers coach George McDonald is, is a big fan um, to where like, hey, you know the route tree. You know, I don't have to hold your hand and tell you how to run routes. I mean, that's the biggest part of being a receiver, in my opinion, uh, from an amateur scout perspective. Like, if you know how to run routes, like, we can work with that. Um, if you've got everything else but you can't run routes, that's an issue. Because um, you got to be able to, you know, the advantage is always on the offense, in my opinion, when especially one-on-one -on -one coverage. I mean, the corner, it's all reactionary. Like, you're, you're trying to read hips, you know, read body language, eyes. I mean, receivers – that run good routes can, can really run themselves open. Whereas like a good press man corner can really be in that back pocket. If you can run good routes, you can get open a lot easier. And I think Caden Lee, um, you know, they've kind of been, they haven't been too coy with it with social media and, and the media department. They've been pushing a lot of, a lot of Caden Lee content out there. Um, I expect him to be a, a big part of the offense. He, he was an underrated three-star coming out of high school, um, but was really productive at a good high school program in Georgia. Um, I, I think he's going to be a guy to know um, for sure this season. Zach, we sit just over a week away from the Grove Bowl, a.k.a. Ole Miss's spring game, Saturday, April the 13th at Bought Hemingway Stadium. What are you most excited to see, and what do you most want to see from this Ole Miss football team, I'm sure a lot of these guys will be playing very limited action or may not be playing at all. But, you know, certainly we can learn a lot. It's a first glimpse at a lot of new pieces, and it's going to be a first glimpse at this 2024 Ole Miss football team. So what is the thing or things you most want to see from Ole Miss in the Grove Bowl? Probably going to keep a, a close eye on the linebacker position. Uh, we talked about Pooh Paul and, and the experience and, and just the cerebral – style of play he has. He's played a lot of SEC ball. I want to see how his – him being featured on the defense will impact Suntering Perkins and how he looks in the defense. Um, I, I think that's the big thing is how will that impact him playing, you know, and where he will play. Um, he played a lot inside. He got lost in the in the wash a little bit because he was a true freshman. He was probably playing around 205, 210. Um, you know, he's been in the weight room. He's gotten bigger. Uh, I, I want to see, you know, coming more off the edge, you know, kind of like the Harold Perkins, you know, the, the curious case of Harold Perkins where he was phenomenal off the edge as a freshman. LSU moves him to the inside. I thought that was a disservice. I, I think same thing with Perkins. You got to keep him on the edge. Um, you got to let him utilize that speed and quickness. He was an outstanding running back in high school. I think that coming off the edge is, is going to better suit him. So Pooh Paul's presence, um, 
and then TJ Dudley played in the Peach Bowl. He was um he wasn't eligible all during the regular season after you know transferring from Clemson after the deadline. Those two guys in the middle, plus all of the the girth they've got up front now with Walter Nolan and JJ Pegues is back, Jared Ivey, um, Xavier Harris, Prince Liam Mommy Ellen. I mean, that that front is gonna be nasty. So how does everybody how how does how does that complement everyone else is is mm-hmm. kind of what I'm looking at on the defensive side because I think the offense outside of the offensive line it, you know what you got it's a known commodity um, so linebacker first and foremost and then I want to see that offensive line how do the the Washington guys mesh how does Jerquan Scott from Southern Miss another experienced guy that's played a lot of ball how is he going to fit in, in in the shuffle there and then. Um, if you if you want to get some you know some some headline stuff here, what's what what's the situation behind Dart Walker Howard? He's he's the number two guy. He's kind of the heir apparent to Jackson Dart. But Austin Simmons is coming on strong. He's playing some baseball right now. He's carving people up. He's getting swords left and right on the mound. But I mean the staff is is so high on him and. In talking with him, Chris, I I think he's 18. I don't know his birthday. I mean, you know, he he reclassified up, but dude is, you know, if he's 18, he's going on 28. I mean, a very mature kid. Um, I think that's important for his role, right? Like he knows I'm I'm down the road. I'm a year or two down the road. He gets that. He knows his role. He understands that he's there to learn and to get better behind Jackson Dart and Walker Howard. So, yeah, you want to see the quarterbacks because you know what Dart's going to give you. Um, I imagine he'll probably do two, maybe three series in the Grove Bowl, and then they'll throw it to the backups. Yeah, you want you want to see Austin Simmons get out there and, and spin it a little bit. Zach Barry of Ole Miss Spirit, the On3 affiliate for the Ole Miss Rebels, talking all things recruiting, Ole Miss football, everything in between. Zach, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Looking forward to the Grove Bowl and looking forward to having you back on again soon. Yeah, man. Appreciate it.